Hi friends, welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanted to specifically dedicate it to the reality of working as a data scientist. The harsh reality, actually. I know there's a lot of glamorization of the data science job. There's a lot of content talking about how to get into data science. And I think it's only fair that we also talk about why is it difficult working as a data scientist in the industry. And I'm not trying to be negative. I think I'm just trying to highlight and shed light on things that I have personally experienced um, and have seen and that's what I'm doing. I've been in the industry for about nine years now, like hard to believe. I feel like I just graduated yesterday. I've been in the industry for, uh, yeah, about nine years. I've been through like multiple data letters. I started out as an engin data engineer, then transitioned to data scientist role. So I think I've learned my fair share of things and I've seen my fair share of things to be able to like talk about that. So. Without wasting any more time, uh, let's get into the video. So whatever I share in this video is based on my personal experience. It is possible that this does not reflect your experience, so no need to get offended <laughs> in the comments, but I just wanted to put a disclaimer. And again, like I have put it in my bio, like all these opinions are my own and does not reflect of any of the companies that I worked at or currently working at. All right, so without wasting any more time, let's jump into it. I have seen a lot of people transitioning out of the data science ladder. Sometimes it like takes them years to get into data science and as soon as they get in, like they work for a few years and then they leave. And the most common job family that they end up going into is product management, which is, I don't know if this is like correlation or causation, like data, does data being a data scientist prepares you to be a better product manager or like, or is it because like you have to have a better communication? So you were like, qualified and you're involved with the product. I don't know, like, what is it? What is it that, why is it that a lot of data scientists end up, who end up transitioning out of the job family end up becoming product managers? Like, I'm genuinely curious why they do that or why is that the case? I have been offered so many times to become a product manager. One of my last managers was giving me feedback and some of the feedback was negative and he actually mentioned to me, like, I should consider, like, becoming a product manager. And one of the things that I bring to the table um, is that I have great communication skills. Like this channel exists because of my communication skills. And as soon as you have good communication skills, I think like you can be a great product manager. And I've been pitched not once, but actually multiple times to transition into product management, which I do not want. Like I started being so vocal whenever I go to my mentors now, I and I'm asking them, asking to get their advice in terms of what I do next. I actually have to put a disclaimer in front before we actually start the discussion and I share like what I'm thinking of, like I, I tell them like the product management is something that doesn't interest me and I like, that's not an option. So if you're gonna give me advice, like make sure that does not include that because yeah, I, am I the only one who has to deal with this? Like for those of you who are working in the industry, is this something that you have to deal with? But anyways, so a little bit of ramble on that. A lot of people end up leaving the data science job family and I think there's various reasons for that. One is like, it's very hard to grow within the data science ladder. The job family is ambiguous. Like people are still trying to understand, like the companies are still trying to understand what to do with the data scientist job family. A lot of people don't even understand what your role is. Some people treat it as like a data analyst role. Some people treat it as like a software engineer. Some people just treat it as like whatever. Like you, I personally have to like educate a lot of people on, on the job family itself. And I start working with somebody on a new project. So the, yeah, the, going back to my point, like career, career growth is hard, which makes it like super ambiguous if people around you don't understand how to evangelize you best. And especially if you're new in the industry and your manager or the people you work with do not understand your role, you're gonna get put on a project that you actually is not in your scope or not part of your job. So it's how is it gonna look on your performance and your when it's being when you're being evaluated for a promotion because the expectation does not match the work that you have done. Um, and the other thing about uh, people leaving and transitioning out of the data science job family is that it's discouraging, it's demotivating because when you see a lot of people leaving, it makes you question like if you should be staying. It is definitely not inspiring at all when people leave the data science job family. I have had in my um, organization, I had a lot of people leave the data scientist um, ladder and I did question the leaders as to why people are leaving, why is why are they not growing within the ladder, but I haven't solved that case, so let me know if you have any thoughts there. Um, the second thing that makes a data scientist job family a hard one is the interview prep. <laughs> Yes, the interview. The second thing that makes it like really, really hard is the job search and the interview prep. I have talked about it in my previous videos a lot because I had suffered from it. It's so intense preparing for a data scientist, job searching a data scientist role and then interviewing for it. The For the job search, you have to like 
figure out because the data scientist at one company does not mean a data scientist, the same data scientist at another company. So you have to do a lot of research and figure out like what exactly is your role and then what exactly is the role that you're applying to. So the titles don't match, which means you have to do a lot of research to read the job description, which increases your workload. And even then, sometimes when you, you'll go into interviews, that turned out to be like super opposite of what the job requirement said. Uh, for example, I've been in an interview with a few companies <laughs> where basically the, the interview was like written for... Uh, data analyst. Um, the whole interview was about like SQL questions, which made me wonder if this is actually, even though the title says data scientist, this is actually, is this actually a data scientist role? Because the, all the questions that they're asking me is for a data analyst. And I'm pretty sure rest of the people who were working there, they interviewed for the same skills and then got hired. So that made me question the whole thing. So my interview process was horrible, like horrible. <laughs> I did not enjoy it. And I do not look forward to ever interviewing again, which I know I will. And I have to be like mentally ready to do that. But the whole thing is like just so messed up because you will spend a lot of time applying to jobs, first figuring out what to apply for, then you would go to the interviews and then at the interview after doing like five loops you'll like realize like this is actually completely wrong I I'm, this is not a data scientist role this is something else and like you move on and then you wasted basically your whole prep and your your like your loop so it, it's kind of like a kind of like a it takes extra work to find the right role that defines the data scientist job family the way it should be or the way you think it should be. So one of those. So that was my second thing. The third thing, which I think is possibly just specific to my, it might be just my experience and I am not sure if anybody else has experienced it. At my last company, I was working as a data scientist and I had this great manager who I really enjoyed working with him. He really understood the data science job family. Um, and we worked very well together. He ended up leaving and I got a new manager and that manager basically used to manage a lot of software engineers and now he's managing data scientists as well. One of the things that we would constantly hear in the meetings when there is like the team is trying to hire a new uh, data scientist. Um, there is also another role called applied scientist and I've talked about it in my videos somewhere here. You can look. His comments were always like, we're gonna hire an applied scientist. We're not gonna hire a data scientist. And I have asked, I've asked questions like why you are not opening this role for a data scientist because like this, the description that you have, the work for the work, like it totally qualifies for a data scientist. Why are you opening for applied scientists? And his comments would always be, and I've heard this multiple times from him, his comments would always be that applied scientists are more fungible. By fungible, <laughs> I had to look up that word, fungible. So applied scientists are more fungible, fungible, Fungible. <laughs> Basically, an applied scientist is a mix of a data scientist and a software engineer. So if you hire applied scientists, you're actually getting a two in one. So you can like give them the software engineering work. You can also give them the data science work. So why would you hire a data scientist when you can hire an applied scientist who can actually swing between the two? <laughs> it just sounds so funny. But I just like, I felt like, I just, I, I felt like, um, Whenever he would say that, like, I would feel so offended because, like, every role has its own reason to exist, right? Like, if, if applied scientist was the role, the it role, then why would there would be a data scientist job family? So every role has their own purpose, and that's why a company is created. So I just was super, I was offended, obviously. I never liked, I never liked whenever he brought it up, and I didn't feel the need to argue. Maybe I should have, maybe I was too junior and I should have done that. But the constant the constant pressure to be compared by other tech, technical job families, uh, such as software engineering or applied scientists, was just n not healthy for my, it was just toxic. It was not good for my own mental health. Whenever those comments were passed, I was felt, I was made feel like I'm like less important than other job families, which I don't know if <laughs> maybe it's true. Don't like tell me that the, the, the role Anyways, so, um, and the problem with him was that he didn't fully understand what, a, what, how to utilize a data scientist fully. So he kind of like went for an applied scientist because now it's fungible. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that word, <laughs> but like, that's a problem in the industry. Like a lot of people won't understand, um, what you're supposed to do, which puts you like awkward spot. And especially if your manager doesn't understand your career development growth is going to be highly impacted 
by their understanding of what a data scientist is supposed to do. So something to keep in mind. But I do know like the industry is getting better and there's like more education. Um, I One of the tips that I would give here is that when you're interviewing, make sure that your manager has a very good understanding of data science job family. Ideally, if they were previously working as a data scientist, as an IC and then transition to manager, like those are like great managers to have because they have actually done the work to fully understand what's in scope, what's not scope and how to grow you in, in this ladder. I've always been mindful when I'm interviewing, like if the manager that I'm interviewing is coming from a non-data science background. And the fourth, I don't know if this qualifies as a harsh reality or more for like a personal experience. I feel like, like most of the things I've shared have been personal experience, but uh, the imposter syndrome. Uh, you're working in the sexiest job of 21st century, according to Harvard Business Review. There's a lot of expectations that you have from this job family. There's a lot of hard work that you put in to this job family. So once you make it, you made it, right? But then comes imposter syndrome where you are basically feeling like, do you even deserve to be here? Like, are you a fraud? Like, do you even qualify for the work that you're doing? And on the second hand, you're like actually doing the work and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just like cleaning data. What am I doing? <laughs> Majority of the times I'm just cleaning data. So the, the, the expectations and realities do not match. And then on top of it, you have this imposter syndrome that is like kind of like holding you back. Um, so it's like a mix of emotions and mix of things that are happening. I think like I personally been through my fair share of imposter syndrome and I'm like actually over it. So I've like talked about it in some of my previous videos. You can watch those videos, but imposter syndrome is there. You might experience it. Just know if you experience it, you're not alone. And it's not specific to the data science job family, but I do want to mention it because it does happen, uh, especially if you're working in a very glamorous job family, such as data science, uh, data scientist role, uh, which we hear a lot about in YouTube, on YouTube, on news, and like um, the Harvard Business Review article. I don't know, I, I think I covered most of the things that I want to talk about. Do you think I missed anything? What are some of the things that you wish that were more obvious to you before you got into the industry? and start working as a data scientist, like let me know in the comments. And the things that I share today, do any of these resonate with you? Or am I just like having a bad experience or had a bad experience? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. And anyways, I hope you're having a great day and I will talk to you in another video. Have a good one. Bye.